And welcome to Business English for Professionals. I'm your host, Tim Mackey. We have this program every Tuesday from 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We invite you to join us. You can grab your pencil and your paper or your computer, whichever, however you want to make notes. Take the notes that are important to you. Remember, this program is brought to you by AGR Consultores. At AGR, we design technical English courses for companies of all sizes, small, medium, and large. Okay, and you can go to our website here, and there's some contact information if you have questions or comments about the courses that we offer. Remember that we custom design the course just for your company. It's not generic one fits all. Each course, each uh, class, all of the material is developed for your company in mind. Okay? Well, today we're going to be looking at several things. We're going to be looking, first of all, at could, would, should. Remember, these are the modal auxiliaries. Then we're going to look at some business phrasal verbs. Okay, now I'm going to write some examples down. Now, let's get back to could, would, should for just a second here. Actually, just so there is no confusion, I'm going to erase this here, business phrasal verbs, and I'm going to put the word modals. Now, modals, this means mood. Okay? All right? Your attitude or your feeling. When you use a modal auxiliary like, I could go, I should go, or I would go, I shall go, all of these indicate my mood, how I'm feeling. They indicate my attitude, my sentiment. Okay? Now, let's look at could for just a second. Things we could do, all right? This is possibility or ability. Is it possible to run one mile? Yeah, it's possible for some people. For others, it is not. When you're talking to a client or a prospect in your company about the things that you could do, this is theoretical, of course, this is in the future. We also use could in the past for theoretical possibility um, or ability, um, or sometimes we use could in the past. Well, I'm going to get into that just a second. Let me talk about it for the future, right? Because I don't want to confuse too much here. Now, let's go back to could in the future. Could, the things that your company could do for the client or the prospect. Could you have these materials available in one week? Could you write up a new contract? Could we see an example? Is it possible? Do you have the ability? Now, this is for the future. And also, this is extremely polite. You see, I could say, can I see an example, or can I see the new project? That's appropriate. But it's a little stronger. If I was to say, could I see the new example or the new project? Could I see the new building? OK. This would be a very polite way of asking something. And remember in business, politeness is everything, okay? In Mexico, we know that very formal grammar is used, very formal salutations, expressions. These are used to talk a bit, to be very polite to people. It's the same thing in English. Now, we don't use this formal grammar, but remember, we use very sophisticated very sophisticated, that's the adult second layer, okay? Those idiomatic expressions, the phrasal verbs, things like that, um, it's very sophisticated. It doesn't sound like it, but it is. 
So we use the could and the would to express this is part of the second layer. If I was to say, can I see the new project? Well, that's not really part of the second layer. It's more like a child would speak. Okay? We would normally say, could. Could we go to the new project site and look? Could we have an example of your software? Could we have a demonstration? This is how we would say it. Okay? So now, could in the past, about 90% of the time, we use could have. Okay? For example, we could have, we could have bought another program. We could have bought another program. For example, or we could not have. Bought another program. So it's theoretical in the past because why? It didn't happen. We did not buy another program, right? We could have, but we did not. So when you use, we, we remember this for the past, we cannot use can. It doesn't work. We have to use the word could. So remember, about 90% of the time we say could. Sometimes we will say, I could not go, I could not drive, I could not finish. That's okay. About 10% of the time we do say without have. But you, normally we say with could have. Okay. Let's look at should real quick. Remember that. Okay, let's look at should. Now, should is a strong recommendation. Think of mom or the doctor, first of all. Mom or the doctor will say, you should take your medicine. You should wear your jacket outside, it is cold. Now, it's not necessity, but it's a very strong recommendation. Um, sometimes we'll say, um, you should, in the corporate world, you should call your client. Okay, you should call your client. What's another one? Uh, how about we? How about we? Let's use that one there. We should start early. Okay, here's one. Another statement. We should start early on this project because we need more time. Now maybe we, it's not necessary. Maybe we have enough days or weeks. But we know that problems could come up, so we would say, well, we should start early, okay? Another one you could use is, should I? Question mark. This is maybe something you would use with somebody who is your boss or maybe even a client company or client. Should I call you back tomorrow? And remember, if they are, if it's an extremely formal situation, you're talking to the CEO or someone from the executive team in another com from another company, especially if it's a Global 1000 company, you would probably say, shall I? If you are talking to a politician, out of respect for the nation or the government, you would do the same thing, shall I, instead of should I. 
This is strong recommendation. This is extremely formal. Okay. I was working with a company not too long ago, and this is a company from the United States, and part of the group, they were servers at banquets for executive teams for global 1,000 companies. Well, they had the tables set, and they had to serve different courses of meals. Now, when one course was done, obviously, they would want to take that course out and put another course in when they came to the table. Some people were saying, may I? Okay. May I take your plate? Well, that's what you would say to common people. But if it's somebody that's real important, like the president uh, of a big company, you would say, shall I? Because you're not going to go into their space until they say, yes, it's okay. If they say, no, not right now, then you have to come back later. May I, you would move into their space. Okay. So this is the most formal. This is the second, uh, or less, we'll say, formal. And then this is the least formal, okay? Should. Okay. Let's look at would real quick. And then we're going to move on to our phrasal verbs. Okay. Our phrasal verbs here. And just a second. But one more is will. Okay. Well, actually it's would. Would comes from will. All right. Now, when we use will in the past, for the past, right, it's not correct for me to say, I will have gone yesterday. I will have liked to go, gone yesterday. I have to say would have. So in the past here, I would have, uh, we'll just say finished, how about that? I would have finished if I had time. Or if I would have had time, either way, okay? I would have finished, okay? I can't say I will have finished, no. That would, that's actually uh, feature perfect. Okay. So, we have would. Obviously, would comes from will. We also use would in the future. Let's look at that. Remember, would and could, these are theoretical possibilities our abilities would for the future for the future here we're going to say would you like some coffee would you like some coffee yes I would like some coffee in fact, in the United States and other English-speaking countries, when you go to a restaurant, that's one of the first things they, they might ask you. Welcome, they would say, that kind of thing. Give you a menu, and then maybe they might say, would you like some coffee? When you go to somebody's house, they say, would you like a glass of water? Would you like to have a seat? This is another one. Okay? This is very, very soft. Okay? If someone comes to your office and you need to, to wait a little bit, your secretary or your staff would say, would you like to have a seat? The Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so will be with you in a few minutes. Would you like to take a seat?
actually even more formal for those of you who really want to know. Would you like to make yourself comfortable? Oops. Yourself comfortable. Okay. You could say, like in the military, someone walks in, they'll say, have a seat. It's kind of like saying, sit down. But that's only in the military. In the corporate world, we would say, would you like to make yourself comfortable? May I get you something? May, would you like some water or coffee? This is another thing that we would do when someone comes to visit the office. The visitor is waiting for the person they need, they need to see in the meeting. So the staff, remember this in, in companies when you have, especially foreign visitors, people who are not used to the culture, they're very uncomfortable, they're not really quite sure what to do on, in, a, in a company, in another country, in a, well, when they visit a company in another country, there we go, they sometimes are very uncomfortable. And the way you make them feel comfortable and welcome in your company is when they come in, because they're probably going to be early, especially people from the United States and England, they're going to be early to the appointment. That's the expected thing, about 10 to 15 minutes early. So obviously they're going to wait. And you say, would you like to make yourself comfortable? Okay, and then you kind of motion to the lobby or the chairs or wherever. And then the customary thing is, would you like some coffee or water? Okay. Now, if they're going to be coming rapidly into the meeting and then leaving, you probably won't offer coffee or water. Okay. But if it's going to be a long one, you could offer some coffee or water. Okay. Now, so that's how wood is used in the future. Another quick example would be you need to, to take the day off. Um, employees usually say to their employers in the United States, could I take off Monday? Could I come in late? Could I take off early? Now, they could say, can I? But that's considered a little bit more direct. Grammatically, it's correct, but still, they want it to be as soft as possible because they want the favor that you're going to give them. So they're going to say, could. Maybe if your project is going to be late, OK? If your project is going to be late, the deadline will not be met with your client. You will call your client in advance and say, could we finish the project a day late? Could we meet with you on Thursday instead of Wednesday? When you do that, you're giving them notice, and it's just a theoretical possibility. It wouldn't really be correct to say, can we finish late? That would be considered a little bit more forceful, okay? So things you could do, things you would do, things you shall do, right? Things you could, would, and should. Another, another, one more saying that we have, we have could've, would've, or actually would've, could've, I have it backwards. Would have, could have. Would have, would have. If I could have. Could have. This is a, just an expression that we have in English. Would have, could have. Did you go to the Paul McCartney concert? Would have, could have. Would have, if I could have. Will also expresses desire. Remember, will, it can be a voluntary desire, okay? I would have, I had the desire, if I could have, if it was possible, okay? Now, let's look at some phrasal verbs. Uh, some of these are going to be 
just kind of random. Remember, there are more than, let me kind of cover this real quick, okay? The adult second layer, the adult second, make my L a little bit better there. Actually, that does not look very good. I'm gonna rewrite it, sorry about that. Okay, adult second layer in English. Now remember, this is a layer, okay? Kind of like when you're painting a house, you put on one layer, it dries, then you put on another layer, it dries. And maybe you'll put a third layer, right? So this is not a level, this is a layer, okay? Or you might refer to it as another dimension, and only adults use it. Kids start learning it around the age of 12, but not until you're in your 20s, maybe even 30s, or do you become real good at this. We're going to talk about more of this, but we're going to take a quick break, and we'll, re we'll be right back, so stay right with us. Ruiz Robles, corredores públicos y peritos traductores. Trabajamos para darle seguridad, confianza y un servicio profesional en sus asuntos relacionados a fe pública, evaluación, arbitraje comercial, asesoría jurídica y traducciones. Para nosotros lo más importante es su satisfacción, brindándole además la asesoría jurídica necesaria en su negocio, con un equipo de profesionales capacitados para prevenir y resolver situaciones de riesgo en su empresa. Le aseguramos una asistencia profesional personalizada y humana a quien consideramos más importante, el cliente, porque las oportunidades pequeñas son el principio de las grandes empresas. Durante siete décadas, Dayman ha desarrollado una amplia gama de colorantes, saborizantes y productos semipreparados que satisfacen los requerimientos de la industria de alimentos, así como las necesidades y gustos de los clientes y consumidores a nivel nacional e internacional. Fashion Look, la belleza habla por ti. Luce siempre perfecta hasta la punta de tus manos y pies y dale un toque diferente a tu look. Somos profesionales especializados en uñas, manicure, pedicure y estética y trabajamos con una perfecta higiene, profesionalismo y calidad total en nuestros productos. Ya contamos con equipo de cavitación. Te ofrecemos una atención personalizada. Fin Hogar, asesoría hipotecaria. Te asesoramos en todo lo relacionado a la adquisición de tu vivienda. Gestionamos para que puedas obtener un crédito hipotecario a la medida de tus necesidades y posibilidades. Trabajamos con las instituciones bancarias de mayor experiencia, seguridad y confianza. Además, tramitamos tu crédito ante Infonavit y Fobis. Una red de profesionales lo espera para asesorarlo personalmente. Pisco Green sabor de origen, restaurante de comida peruana. Te espera para disfrutar de una auténtica gastronomía peruana en un ambiente familiar y acogedor. Contamos con terraza para fumadores, salón privado y servicio de ballet park. Te ofrecemos servicio de catering y la organización de tus eventos familiares y de negocios. No te olvides de probar nuestro Pisco Sao. Te esperamos. Con Trujillo Betanzos y Asociados, tus proyectos están en buenas manos. Trujillo Betanzos y Asociados te ofrece servicios de fe pública en materia mercantil, asesoría legal, contable, fiscal y de negocios, litigio civil y mercantil, evaluación y asesoría financiera y área académica. Porque nuestros clientes son nuestros mejores amigos. And welcome back here to 
Business English for Professionals. We're looking at the adult second layer. Now let's talk about this some more here, okay? We have our adult second layer, okay? Remember, 70%, okay, of adult communication involves a second layer, okay? Rarely is the adult second layer taught here in Mexico. Why? I don't know. It just isn't. Usually, most companies, like 90, well, I've never known of a company, and I know who all of them, how, all of them are, you know who they are. We are the only company that teaches the second layer. I don't know if anyone else does. They might use a few phrasal verbs or a few idiomatic expressions, but that's it, they stop. Okay? Well, let's look at this. In English, okay, there are more than 35,000 idioms, okay? Idiomatic expression, more than 35,000. There are more than 4,000 phrasal verbs, okay? More than 4,000, okay, phrasal verbs. There are more than 1,000 prepositional phrases uh, and word clusters, okay? More than 1,000 in word clusters. So as you can see, there are more than 40,000, more, okay? And there are new ones evolving all the time. Remember, the English language has more words than any other language. It has more than one million words. More than one million words, remember that, okay? This is important, partly because we, and, and a lot of these are technical words, okay, we, for a lot of different uh, industries, we have a lot of different technical words, so we use this here, and we borrow or assimilate words from other cultures, okay? For example, the word vidya, we use this word in English, yeah, we do. Okay, it's not an English word, but we throw it into our dictionary, okay? Now, when you're working with a client or a prospect, this is where you need to be, right over here. You need to be in this area. Don't be using this simple grammar. Yeah, that's a good foundation, all right? But you need to be over here. Because if you're not using this 70% second layer, you're, you're talking like a little kid. You're talking like a 10-year-old child. And while people, yeah, you can communicate to some degree, but how do you create conviction? How do you convince a client or a company to spend money? How do you get their attention? You need to do it over here. Now, looking at this more than 40,000, we'll say expressions, or group of words, right? Word groups. When you combine all of these in the different ways that they can be combined, well, it's really limitless. It's limitless. This is why it's a lifetime journey, okay? Fifth Avenue, Advertising companies are always coming up with new expressions. They combine things, okay? Take a little bit of an idiomatic expression, maybe a phrasal verb, and chop it up and redo it again, okay? For those of you who want to be successful songwriters, right here, these two. Take your thoughts about a subject, apply these two. About approximately 85% of songs, or the lyrics in songs, are nothing but these two. 
Take the example of the Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand. That was a very famous song, Here Comes the Sun. Those are idiomatic expressions. They didn't write that. That wasn't new. That's old. There's one company that uses the idiomatic expression, think out of the box. A lot of people think that's new. No, that's been around for a very long time, decades. I'm not sure how long, but maybe 50 years or longer, okay? Okay, let's go into this second layer. I'm going to look at some phrasal verbs, and I'll write some examples down, okay? Our first one here, for business, um, business phrasal verb, is backup. This means, this can mean a couple of different things. We have computer backup, where that means to copy files or archives onto something, right? So we have, we need to back up the system. Now, I encourage you to write these things down. Write down the examples so you'll remember, okay? This is, remember to make a copy of. There's another kind of backup. Number one is number two. The other kind of backup is support or evidence. Support or evidence, right? Can you back up your design? How about that? Can you back up your design? Okay. Maybe you're an engineering person and you've got this really special design, people are not sure it's going to work, and they may ask you, can you back that up? Do you have evidence? Do you have support? What data? Maybe you're in a um, farm, uh, laboratory, laboratory uh, manufacturing medicine. You have a new medicine that can cure the common cold, okay? No matter what the symptoms. Take one pill and it's gone, right? Well, can you back up your, your claim? In fact, I'm going to change design to claim. Can you back up your claim? We claim this medicine is the best thing that cures cancer, right? Can you back it up? Do you have support? Do you have evidence? Okay. So another one in here, number three, this is not, so these are the two different meanings. One is for copy, one is for support or evidence. But let me give you one more example of backup. The army needs backup. Okay, maybe the army is being asked to secure a particular area, but they only sent maybe 200 soldiers. So they need backup, they need more people. They need support. Okay. In fact, a lot of times when we're talking to prospects, well, we're telling the prospect company, look, we can do this service for you. We have a lot of backup for you. That means extra support, extra personnel to make sure this is going to get done. Okay? We have a lot of support, a lot of backup. Okay? Our next one is back out. This has a couple of meanings, okay? Back out. 
Okay, one meaning is for a car or a truck, a vehicle to go backwards, to move out of the space. Let's say we have a street, okay, and there's a car here, and there's a car here. These don't look like cars, I know, they look like squares. Well, you get the idea, I think, if we were looking down from an aerial view, so they might look like a square. Now, maybe this car here needs to back out, so this car would go in this direction, okay? He can't go forward, he's going to back out. A lot of times we say, I need to back the car out of the garage. Okay, or back out, I need to back the car out of the space, right? We have another meaning for back out. Okay, this is physical back out, backing out the car. But when we want to withdraw our offer or withdraw our participation, okay? So withdrawal. Okay, participation. Is to back out. Sometimes maybe you're in a financial arrangement, you're going to buy a property. And you say, uh, oh, we've decided to back out. We haven't signed the paperwork yet, we're going to back out. We are going to withdraw our participation. Okay? Well, we're going to come right back in just a moment and continue this. Stay with us and take more notes. It'll be good for you. Actually, I don't think we've gone to our station break yet, but uh, we, are, we are in just a second. So I went ahead and put this in there. Okay, we'll be right back. And welcome back. We had a little delay in our production here. When I said we were gonna go station break, we didn't, but no big deal. I just wrote this up here anyway. So let's go back to our back out, okay? Remember with back out, we're going to withdraw our participation. So we have our example here. We are going to back out um, of the contract or the offer. It's not a it's not a contract yet. If it's a contract, we may not be able to back out. We may have to get lawyers to do that. But if it's just an offer, we can back out. And that's exactly how you would say it. Okay? Uh, in fact, sometimes they'll say, oh, please don't back out now. Stay in. Don't back out. Don't leave. Okay? Let's look at another one. Bailout. For those of you in the banking industry, you may have heard this or used it. I'm not sure. The United States is uh, pretty familiar with this here term. This is actually a, a strategy used by the U.S. Federal Reserve, and that's all I'll say about that, okay? <laughs> Bailout. This is used to redistribute, yep, redistribute wealth, but that's another class. Okay. Bailout. Well, there's a couple different meanings. Let's talk about where this really comes from, okay? Originally, okay, you have a boat And it's in the water. Is there a boat here, right? Okay. If the boat starts to take on water, if there's a big hole in the boat and the water goes in, okay, we start having water in the boat, well, they have to get a bucket and they, or a pump and they have to start bailing, it's called bailing, with a bucket the water out 
bail the water out. So we help save the ship, right? Well, that's one kind of bailout, and that's really where it comes from many years ago. The bailout we're talking about is financial bailout. Let's say you owe $100,000 in your business, and you need help to pay this money off, or maybe your business will close. Well, you ask a friend or somebody you know for a bailout, a loan, okay? This is a loan. A bailout is a loan. Okay? So, in, like, in the United States, when, or, well, globally, actually, not just the United States, when a lot of the financial institutions, like Lehman Brothers, had difficulty and they couldn't, they didn't have enough liquid cash, they asked the U.S. Federal Reserve for a bailout, a loan, at very low interest, right? Well, they refused, and of course Lehman Brothers went under. There were other institutions that went under. When we say go under, we mean they went bankrupt, they collapsed. In the United States, we have this thing called government bailout, okay? The government looks at these big, how it's going to affect things, the big financial institutions, if they collapse, so they bail them out. They get them out of trouble, they give them the money they need to operate. Okay, it's financial bailout. Now, there's one other bailout, and that is, and I don't know if they do this in Mexico, but in the United States, when someone gets arrested, they say they're driving drunk and the police stop them and take them to jail. Maybe it's a serious thing because uh, maybe they crashed into a building or something, I'm not sure, or hit another car. So they have to stay in jail. Well, they have to get bailed out. Someone has to bail them out. They have to pay the court maybe $500 for that person to get out of jail. Or otherwise, the person has to sit there. So basically, another way to say this is, is rescue. Okay. The company needs a bailout. Usually bailouts come from the government or, at least in the United States, they come from the government or an unusual source. Okay, maybe someone's going to joint venture. They're not really going to loan the company money. They're going to invest to help them bail out of their problems. Okay. Another one might be um, they need to bail them out of their problems. Okay. You might be in a meeting in the future where the company's got a lot of fiscal problems or labor problems or whatever kind of problems. And they need a lot of help. So, when it's a lot of help, they need a bailout, someone to bail them out of trouble. They need, a, they need to bail them out of their problems. Company A needs to bail Company B out of their problems. Okay, this is bailout. Let's look at another one here. Bring forward. Bring forward. Now, this means to something that was in the back 
now we're going to bring it up. For those of you who've worked with any kind of a Photoshop or maybe something in Microsoft Word or Publisher or something you like, if you're working with Publisher, you have an image and then you put this image here and then maybe two images, you're going to blend it, but you want one to be covering the other one. It says bring forward. Okay, send back or bring forward. So when something's in the back here, this is in the back, and now we're going to bring it forward. Literally, we're going to move it. Well, we use this for ideas, situations, concepts. Okay. He is going to bring the new idea forward. Okay? Another word might be advance. Okay? You're going to advance this idea, you're going to bring it forward. Okay? We use this in the formal announcements for a king or somebody very special. They're going to bring forward the new president, bring forward the new king, something like that. But it's typically used for ideas to bring forward. Let's look at one that many people are familiar with. You personally might be familiar with this one here. And this is called burnout. Burnout. Now, it's important in companies that, em that employees do not get burned out. Okay? We call it employee burnout. This is a very common phrase employee burnout rate. This is when people get so tired of their job and they can't do it anymore. They're working too many hours, they're tired, maybe they're frustrated. All kinds of things cause people to burn out. This comes from the idea, like if you have a, a fire in your fireplace, or if you have a candle that's burning. Let's look at the candle example. If you're burning a candle at nighttime, because maybe the lights went out, after maybe four hours, the candle stops. It can no longer burn. It's burned out. There's nothing left to use. So employees use this, or companies use it, to talk about people when they're used up. That's another one, used up, right? Another phrasal word. When people can no longer perform, or perform well, they are burned out. Companies take this very serious, employee burnout. So they do things like give people flex time, maybe put a gym in, give people extra money or a bonus, or they have different, they'll have a party or something to try to encourage employees not to burn out, okay? Some professions have a high burnout rate, okay? Sometimes a lot of people burn out with teaching, especially if they're teaching children, because when you teach children, it takes a lot of energy. And a lot of people just get so tired, they say, oh, I can't teach secondary anymore because I'm just too tired. So they burn out. Employee burnout rate. When we talk about employee burnout rate, we're talking about what, how often do people burn out in your company? Every six months? Every two years? Because when we talk about employee burnout rate, we're talking about how often people need to be replaced. And this affects your, let's say the bottom line, another phrasal word there, 
the bottom line, it affects profit. It, it affects what the company spends, okay? Expenses on new recruiting, new training, employee burnout. Let's look at one here, callback. I will call you back. Okay? Or maybe this is a callback. Let's look at the difference here. I will call you back. Now remember also when you use will, it's a promise. It's not talvez, it's not maybe. Make sure you do. When you tell somebody this is I will call you back. Okay? That means to return the call. There's another one. This is a callback. Well, if you're in the office and you get a callback, this means that in the time before that, you placed a call to someone. You asked for them. They weren't there, you want them to return your call. So they're going to call back. That's simple, call back. In sales and marketing, we have a phenomenon or we have a, a category called callbacks. Now, in sales and marketing, we have this whole phenomenon of callbacks that means that people are not pleased about something and so they're calling back to complain. That's another kind of callback. Okay? Different from this callback. Okay? This kind of callback is I'm marketing, I'm calling prospects, and they call back to let me know, hey, I want to talk to you. I'm interested in your product. And then this callback is a negative thing. Okay? The other kind. One is a positive. Okay? One is a negative. Okay? We get this a lot in construction. And people say they replace electricity or plumbing, and then there's a callback. It costs the company more money to send the guy out there to do the job right. It's called a callback also. Okay, here. Let's look at more, one more quick one. Call off. Call off. That means to stop. To stop. To terminate, okay? To terminate a process or project, or to stop people from participation, stop the process. We need to call off the meeting for tomorrow. We're going to have it next Friday, okay? That's another example of call off. Sometimes we have a phrase, call off the dogs. <laughs> In the United States, when uh, somebody feels threatened, they send their dog after the other person to attack them. That's called call, you know, call them the sicking your dogs on somebody. Well, we have a phrase in the United States, when the attorneys start coming to sue your company, we say, hey, call off the dogs, or call off the, I'm not calling them, Attorney's dogs, I'm just telling you, this is the expression you will use, okay? Um, call off. You need to call off the meeting, call off the project, call off other things. Well, this is our conclusion for the phrasal verbs today. And remember, each week we're going to bring you some phrasal verbs, idiomatic expressions. We're going to work on the second layer, the adult second layer of English. That's 70%. Okay? Remember, you can contact us at agrconsultorius.com.mex. Yeah, there's contact information there. If you'd like to talk to us about designing a technical English course for your company, remember a company of any size, or if you're interested in private lessons also, we have teachers for that as well. Well, until then, until next week, remember to use English to think out of the box and think about the second layer more. Try to use it more, okay?
Tune in each Tuesday from 2 to 3. I'm Tim Mackey, your host. Until then, have a good week.